Without water, we cannot grow food. Agriculture claims more than two-thirds of all the fresh water withdrawn from the earth. And as the world's population grows, so will our water needs. But resources are finite. So the challenge now is to improve agricultural productivity without using more water. To achieve more crop per drop. Around one-fifth of Malawi's surface area is fresh water. But in Ingwena village, less than one kilometer from the shores of Lake Malawi, severe drought wiped out this year's crops. The villagers have just started work on an irrigation system. These bricks will channel their most precious resource to the fields and prevent another hungry winter. There's never enough rain. Some people started growing tomatoes using watering cans and buckets, but they realized they couldn't make any money out of it. Gracie Foti and her neighbors know they're fortunate to have an abundant supply of water. But only now, with funding and training provided by FAO's special program for food security, are they learning how to make efficient use of it? Once the irrigation project is set up, we expect to have enough food for ourselves. And we'll be able to sell the surplus. So my children and my family will have a better life. The villages of Quidzi, just 10 kilometers down the road, have also struggled through months of famine, but for a very different reason. In January, sometimes there is drought, and sometimes there are floods. This year's floods buried our crops in the sun. All the maize was washed away, and nobody had anything to harvest. The land, waterlogged for months, can now be prepared for the corn seeds distributed by an NGO. It will be harvested before the rains come, and the villagers are counting on a good yield. Stephen Rubin, the village headman, doesn't blame the disaster on a lack of resource management. He simply accepts his village's fate. This is all part of God's plan. We're lucky the flood happened at four in the morning. If it had happened at night, many people could have died. Further north in Kasungo, villagers are intent on harnessing the elements by rebuilding the Kahuranjino Dam. When it's finished, rainwater harvested during the wet season will be used to irrigate crops during the dry season. Once again, the project is financed by FAO's special program for food security. Agnes Moale and her fellow farmers contribute a monthly subscription fee to a community fund, as well as a lot of hard work. <laughs> I've helped build the dam by carrying sand and stones and by unloading soil onto the embankment. Once the dam is finished, there will be progress. We'll be able to grow more vegetables and we'll be planting maize and other crops. Things will be different.
The dam is useful. Now we should get surplus crops and that means extra money. So I'll be able to buy something for my children. Thousands of miles away in Ecuador, irrigation schemes and water management projects set up by FAO's special program for food security are well established and bearing fruit throughout the country. The Chota Valley in the heart of the Andes is home to the descendants of West African slaves brought over to work in the sugarcane plantations in the 18th century. Here, a project has given people like Hermerita Chala, a widowed mother of nine, grandmother of twenty, the chance to learn more efficient farming techniques and start irrigating her land. I've always been a farmer, but before I didn't know the right way to do it. There are three or four of us women farmers. Around here, it's usually the men who work the land and the women do the selling. But I'm just as good as any man. Before we had the irrigation system, there was always a scramble for water. But now, all the farmers take it in turns. It's fairly cheap, and now that it's managed properly, there's no waste, so we save money. But we still don't have drinking water. Now, there's less poverty. I'm not rich, but I'm more organized, and thank God I have good harvests. Water is the foundation for agriculture and for family life. Without water, there is nothing. 